When doing a research project, there are two things that you know for sure as a college student. One thing that you know for sure is that you're in for a long ride. You're in for a lot of hours of research, a lot of hours of looking in books, a lot of hours of looking online, and a lot of hours of looking in articles. Now, if you're good at time management, this isn't really a problem. Needless to say, it's a problem for me. But the other thing about research projects is that you know that you're about to become really well informed about a subject. Now, upon choosing a certain topic for myself, I was looking at my interests. I knew that I loved the medical field, and I know that I love mental disorders. Thus, I chose bipolar disorder. Now, many of you probably have a general idea of what bipolar disorder is. But what you might not know is that these alterations in moods that people with bipolar disorder have don't happen like that. People don't go from happy to sad very quickly. Now, these changes over a long duration of time. Someone will stay sad, and they'll stay in their bed for weeks on end. And the same with when they're feeling really happy. They'll feel so elated and happy that they can't really do their work. And this happens over a longer period of time. Thus, the time increments you are looking at are much lengthier than changing your mood every other second. Now, these two different mood states that I'm talking to you about, mania and depression, these elevations in mood are brought on by chemical imbalances in the brain. There is no known cure for bipolar disorder, but there are treatment plans that can be done to help alleviate these symptoms. Now, today I'm going to talk to you about the two main types of treatments for bipolar disorder. Um, bipolar patients usually utilize medicine and therapy to treat the symptoms. Once diagnosed with bipolar disorder, your doctor is going to refer you to either a pharmacologist or a psychopharmacologist. And they're going to prescribe to you medication in the form of a mood stabilizer. Uh, the most known is lithium. Now you need this medication to help you to help you alleviate the symptoms. But there are two. There are a couple downfalls to medications as well. Medications can have various side effects, some detrimental to one's health, such as loss of motor function. And the other problem with medication comes along with patient compliance. Upon doing my research, I did a study that was comprehensive to the entire population of bipolar disorder patients, and there was some shocking evidence. 77% of the entire population of people with bipolar disorder have a problem with following their doctor's orders. And what they do is they either don't listen to the doctor and they don't take the correct amount of medication, or they just don't know the correct amount they're supposed to take. Now, this is a problem because doctors go to med school for a reason. They know what is best for their patients. Now, you might not think that you're as bad off as your doctor says you are, but believe me, he knows better than you what is going to help you with your symptoms. So, when it comes down to it, you should really trust your doctor. Regardless, people aren't going to listen, and they're going to go against the doctor's orders. So, there, are, there is the problem with patient compliance, and there is the problem with side effects of medication. Now, I'm not trying to dismiss medication. It's very effective. Now, to prove my point that medication does help, I'm going to talk to you about a case study that I read about. I happened to read with a story named Jill. Jill was a young woman who wanted to become a college professor. She, two years after graduate school, she had a newborn baby. And now, uh, this should have been the happiest time for a woman. But Jill started acting very different. She would go through periods of crying uncontrollably. And she was persistent on the fact that her newborn baby carried the mark of Satan. A couple weeks later, she would be so happy and alleviated that she couldn't even focus on the schoolwork that she had to do at hand. Thus, her pediatrician referred her to a psychopharmacologist who prescribed Jill with mood stabilizers, lithium in this case. Jill took heavy doses of this lithium, and she ended up feeling a lot better than she was beforehand. She could focus on being a great mother and also focus on her career as being a professor. Thus, this is a case of how medication can help bipolar patients fully. Yet, with the downsides, you, no one should just go with medication. Because if the medication doesn't work, then you're kind of left on the dark side with not knowing what to do. The other type of treatment that I'm going to talk to you about today is therapy. There are many types of therapy. 
ranging from cognitive analytical therapy to cognitive therapy to family therapy to long-term therapy and to short-term therapy. But for our reasons here today, we're just going to talk about how therapy helps bipolar patients. And it does help bipolar patients. What it does is it, it tells them what they're going through, what they're thinking, why they're feeling this way in certain states, why their moods are changing. It explains to them what they're going through. And in my opinion, I think that bipolar, bipolar patients need to go through this. They need to know what is happening to them. Thus, bipolar patients really should go through a certain type of therapy from the onset. Now, I'm not saying that therapy is perfect, because it isn't. In another case study that I was looking at, another young woman was diagnosed with bipolar disorder while in graduate school. Her name was Alini. Alini was a graduate student in a psychology program, and she was diagnosed, funny enough, with bipolar disorder. She was assigned to a therapist. Now, Alini was nice, she was funny, she hit it off with the therapist right away. They both went to the same graduate school, as a matter of fact. And the entire idea that she was going through therapy while going through graduate school for psychology made the matter funny for everybody. So the therapy was focused with Alini on the fact that she, need to, she needed to reduce the stress in her life. In order to reduce the stress in her life, she needed to have a set schedule, go to bed at the same time, wake up the same time every night, have meals at the same time every day. This way, she knows what's going to happen, she's not going to be stressed out, she can do what she needs to do so she can focus and not become stressed. Well, exam time came up and she really needed an extra couple of hours to study. She thought to herself, I'm just going to ask the therapist for it. I've been doing so well at this point, you know, what's, what can be the harm with a couple of extra studies for one night? So she goes to her therapist and says, would it be okay if I just took a couple of extra hours tonight to study for the exams I have? Now the therapist should have known right there, no, nope, I'm sorry, we have a plan that's working. You need to stick to it. Even if it does mean cut down and less on study time, this is more important for you. But Alini begged. She said, please, you know how well I've been doing. All it is an exam. It's for a good reason. Just let me study these extra couple of hours. What's the worst that can happen? Now the therapist, going against her better judgment, said, okay, okay, a couple extra hours tonight. It was one of the worst mistakes the therapist could have made. The therapist woke up the next morning finding out that Alini was in the emergency room. Alini was found in the school library the next morning in a frenzied state and psychotic state. So much so that people couldn't calm her down and they had to bring her to a hospital and put her on sedatives to calm her down. The therapist made a horrible decision. She became too attached to her patient, so much so that it was foggy with her decisions on how to go about the treatment. There have been studies that have shown that therapy, along with medication, provide the best treatment for bipolar patients. And one study that I looked at, they looked at bipolar patients and they split them up into three groups. The first group was 16 bipolar patients who had the treatment plans of cognitive analytical therapy along with medication, another group who had cognitive therapy and medication, and then a third group with medication alone. And the results proved some shocking evidence. It showed that medication alone does not provide the best treatment plan at all. Those with medication alone had the most episodes, had the most elevations of mood, and had the least amount of control over themselves. The group that had the best results was that group that had the cognitive analytical therapy and the medication. They were able to control themselves they were able to keep their mood at a stable level without fluctuating between depression and mania. And then the second group, cognitive, analytic, cognitive therapy and medication, that group was just almost as well off as the cognitive analytical therapy group. Now what this proves to you is that medication alone can't get the job done. You need a type of therapy to help you, to help sustain these symptoms, to help die down these fluctuations in mood that people are receiving. So overall, what I'm trying to prove to you guys today 
is that if you are diagnosed with bipolar disorder, the best way to go about treatment is to go with medication and therapy. Think of it this way. If the medication isn't working, you have the therapy to back you up. If the therapy is not working, you have the medication to back you up. Maybe neither the therapy or medication are working that well, but at least you have both to help you. Or maybe, best case scenario, you have both the medication and the therapy working very well, in which case you have the best of both worlds. I rest my case. Go with medication and therapy. It is the best way to go about to treat your bipolar disorder. Thank you.